check this out. I'm gonna show you this crimper, crimper I bought, this hydraulic crimper I bought off the internet. Uh, I'll put a link in the description where you can get it. It's probably made in China or somewhere. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna be crimping some uh, some 2 aught Today I'm upgrading some of my cables. Uh, when you get when you get a crimper like this, you're gonna have to figure out because it doesn't tell you what sizes for what. So when you figure it out, uh, make sure you mark your dies. And the one that does um, two aught is the number 50 die. And just you know write them down somewhere so you'll remember because four aught uh, four aught is like number 16 four aught. And then uh, you can also crimp these Anderson ends for that go into Anderson plugs. I just crimp them twice, and uh, but it, it won't use the same die as a like a number four for just a number four gauge wire. You have to use a little different one to crimp a four in, four aug Anderson plug. Anyway, you see you can kind of see the difference in the wire. This is this is two odd. The red one here is is number four. It's just four odd. And this is number six. It's all fine stranded welding wire. It's from uh, Temco. I get it on Amazon, and they, it's about the best price I found on it. But it's uh, it's really flexible, and it's good heavy wire. Real fine strands in it. And I just use these Klein to cut it. Also, you can crimp these little ends on like this, like for a, um, if you're going into your charge controller or wherever. Some of them I soldered on, but you can also crimp them. Like if your charge controller doesn't want to hold number four, you can put one of these on there. And I always put one on anyway because you shouldn't use stranded wire when you're when you're torquing it down. Uh, with like a screw or something that's holding it. So I always, you know, put one of these on and then if it doesn't fit in the charge controller or something, I'll crimp it down to where it'll fit so I can run the size wire I want to run in it. Anyway, to, to uh, this one's not cut real even, but I'll show you how I uh, take the jacket off. I just mark, you know, wherever it's going to go. And I, I just use my pocket knife and I go all the way around but I don't go all the way through and as soon as I see it meet that I know because I can't feel any wire with my knife because I don't want to take any of the strands off and just to show you no strand well, if you just score this certain type of wire this welding Temco wire um, if you only score it all the way around you can grab it and just twist a little bit I'll say that in a like that and see I, I cut into none of, I didn't cut any of the strands see there, there's no strands coming off I didn't cut into any of them anyway that's the best way that I've found to do that so let me show you how I make a crimp with this I always put it in my vise <coughs> Tighten down the knob there, and if I know my, I want my lugs to be, you know, the same in line with one another. I always go with the riding on there. I've already taken the insulation off these. I just put the lug in. Slide it through the die. Kind of start tightening it down. As soon as it gets snug to where it's holding that lug, I push in. I push in on this side. And as long as you want to look, as long as that die is closed up right there and there's no gap, you know you got a good crimp. If you keep going, you can blow the O-ring in these hydraulic crimpers, so stop when you get it there. 
so and it makes a really nice crimp I mean that is not coming off no matter what you can feel how tight it makes the wire inside the insulation from compressing these so go ahead and do this other end right quick There you go, perfectly crimped cable, and it's not coming off. You just take you some heat shrink, and another thing that, that I had to learn the hard way by buying some of the wrong stuff, to get the uh, proper uh, adhesive heat shrink from these people, and I'll leave a link into where you can get it, but I get one inch heat shrink. And that way I know it slides right over the lug and tightens down. It took me a while because they don't ever tell you what size heat shrink fits any certain size cable that you're buying. This is two aught, one inch heat shrink. I get the adhesive kind. It uh, fits it good. And when I heat it up for that heat shrink, I start on the lug end, and then I just start working my way down onto the cable. And I make sure I put plenty of heat on it. You can use a heat gun or whatever, but on this adhesive kind, you want to heat it till you see some of that adhesive coming out. And I can see it now, so that's good. So you can see some of the some of the adhesive coming out around the heat shrink here. pretty much it and this is a uh, of course this is uh, four number four so you can see the difference you're getting when you go from a number four to a two aught cable I mean you're gonna have absolutely no resistance in that there's just no way um, I'm a fan of bigger cables so that's but you can also do these Anderson ends on there and I've crimped all these. This is number four. This is two aught. Uh, I use that on my inverters and stuff, so that way if I need to swap one out, it's real easy for me to just, you know, pull it out and disconnect them. But anyway, that's the best way to, and some of this is some of the best cable I've found. I've had different kinds with different kinds of insulation on it that, that are just a pain in the ass to get the insulation off. This, this stuff comes off. You can see how well it comes off. And it's got a little lining in there, some kind of paper or something. But um, this uh, Timco's uh, welding cable, and the best place to get it I found is on Amazon or eBay or somewhere like that. But uh, you get the lugs from them. Make sure you, you can order the size holes you want. You know you get. But anyway, hope that helps somebody. Thanks YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. Give me a like button, give me hit the like button, whatever.